Okay, okay, cool. So does everyone see? I think so. Hmm? Not that I stand. I'll just move over to the side. So, okay, first of all, thanks very much for, for having me here today. Thanks, Chris, for inviting me and for bringing me here. It's a big honor to meet you guys all. And, yeah, to potentially, like, there are some opportunities that could arise from this. And, yeah, we're super excited to be here. There's also some of my team who is here today, so I'll introduce them a bit later on the slide. So that should be fine. So, yeah, so basically Chris asked me to um, just tell a little bit about... Rubybox, about myself, about Rubybox, how it came about, what we do, and yeah, and obviously like it should be an interactive session. So you guys please step in if you have any questions or you wanna like go into detail somewhere, you find something interesting, like please please raise your hand or just shout out and ask me. I'd love to hear as much of feedback also and question as possible. So okay, so who am I? Yeah. <laughs> Chris already said a little bit stealing like this lovely picture that Oprah took <laughs> for the presentation. So I'm Austrian born, 20 something, I can still say that, because I'm just about to turn 30, but it's still the same 20 something. Yeah. Um, I love traveling and discovering. So I have been living um, in quite a lot of places, quite some continents, and, um, and now for four years already in, in South Africa, for over four years, and I'm loving it here, and I'm definitely staying for quite a bit longer. And obviously also bound here with the business and committed and and yeah, thanks to all South Africans for accepting foreigners into your country and like <laughs> welcoming them and you know, giving them a chance. And like it's really cool. I mean our team is also quite quite diverse and international team and it's it's fun, it brings in a lot of creativity and and different opinions and different work styles. So I think that's quite cool. Um yeah, so I love traveling, discovering. I, I love excitement and adrenaline things. I'm quite a sportive person and have done quite a lot of adrenaline stuff. And uh, yeah, surprises, the unknown. I love challenges and that all together sort of, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur and <laughs> what I sort of put there. Also, I think need, that is sort of the dark qualities that an entrepreneur needs because yeah, there's always unknown, there are always surprises. It's very challenging. So. It's sort of like char characteristics that an entrepreneur need. And just from my um, background, um, I studied business management, international business management in Europe. I started in Vienna and then I did something called SEMS, which is the Community of European Management Schools, and did a master in international management. And that helped me to travel to quite a bit of different countries, see different universities. Um, that was very enriching. And um, yeah, I, I did internships in New York and in Santiago de Chile and um, and during living in France and studying there, I actually got into the beauty industry. I worked for L'Oreal in sales, so really in the field. So I was driving around just a little car filled with merchandise and having to go to the Carrefour and all these big, like, big uh, hypermarkets, hypermarché, they call it there. And yeah, and sell stuff to them. I mean, it's actually centralized how that works. But then in France, because you can negotiate everything right there and then, um, they actually got like a whole team of, I don't I, th I think it was 15 girls, yeah, all young girls, to actually go there and negotiate with the guys and like, the shells and place. <laughs> and, uh, but that was the strategy basically. Yeah? So yeah, we had to charm them to get some more additional merchandise in there. And that was great. And then also I continued that being back in Austria and uh, doing an internship in marketing, where I discovered that I really love branding and um, it's a big passion of mine. And, um, and then ultimately when I finished all my studying, <laughs> I went to, uh, to work for Procter & Gamble in Frankfurt, which was amazing. I mean, Procter & Gamble is a really good school of marketing. Um, it's, I mean, they are quite like rigid in a way, like it's potentially not the most creative place. But it's definitely from a business management perspective, it's amazing. Yeah? So that taught me a lot. And then I came here. <laughs> so that's in a, in a snapshot. That. Okay, so what is Rubybox? Yeah? So what do we actually do? Um, I would say, and I hope a lot of our consumers would say, <laughs> that we sell pretty cool stuff. <laughs> we sell online beauty products, basically. So we, uh, we have a, a monthly subscription that our consumers sign up for. It's a, it's a little box that they get delivered, filled with uh, trial sizes, uh, sample sizes, but also sometimes full sizes. And it's always a surprise, which is a beautiful element. So that's usually our hook to get the customers because they sign up for that. And it's also a lovely product because it builds your base. Yeah? Like the customers sign up, it's like for a magazine subscription. They actually sign up and it just recurs every month until they decide to opt out. You can do that any time, of course. But it is like a membership yeah, in a way. 
And it gives us, as Rubybox, a touch point to talk to consumers every month, physically, but of course also online more than every month. Yeah? But it's, it's, a, it's a great touch point that is between 100 and 119 rand per month because we have different options. Um, but then, uh, that was our initial product, and then we extended it with, with e-commerce, with proper e-commerce. So now we are also selling um, beauty products online, full size. So the idea is the whole try, discover, buy. Uh, 360 model, um, that's what we're doing. But then, and not a lot of people and potentially companies know that, we actually are a marketing vehicle for companies. I mean, it's pretty obvious that we do that for the beauty industry because we sample their products. So, I mean, it is a marketing vehicle for them. But we actually do much more than that. Yeah? We, we add on market research. Um, we do online marketing for brands and we extend it out of just beauty brands actually to other brands as well and have done a lot of exciting initiatives which, which you'll see a bit later of what we did. So um, I'd say the, the selling online is our key focus right now but we believe that actually being using, making use of our amazing database and, and, and uh, really offering that also to companies is for us where a lot of potential lies. <laughs> Just if you haven't seen it. I mean, that's the new website design, yeah? but that is basically how does it work? That's the monthly subscription. That's how we would usually get our, our customers. Yeah? 119 rand a month, sign up, that's it. And also, why I wanted to show you that is we also want to do more and more video reviews. We already started a little bit about that, but that's what Chris actually mentioned shortly. We really want to provide more content, you know, and that's not just written reviews, but also video reviews and engage customers to also post them. And that's actually, we've seen um, Ruby, I mean, Rubybox was actually inspired by an international model, and they are very, very, birchbox.com, and they are very, very good in engaging their audience in the US, which are obviously a bit further ahead, but to engage their audience to post content, um, um, to really rich media content. There's tons of videos out there. I mean, I'll, I can show you something a bit later in the presentation about that. So who is Ruby Box? So um, yeah, it's also again from a magazine, <laughs> lovely fair lady who did that at our office. So that's Margot and myself. Margot's here today as well, <laughs> who are the founders of, of, of Ruby Box. Um, so we founded it in September 2011, yeah, the company. So it has been going for about one and a half years now. And um, obviously our complete team, we are 11 all girls team. Anya is here today as well, our online marketing manager. So, yeah, but we are 11 girls, and then we have one male Italian intern. <laughs> and he was pretty scared when he arrived. <laughs> he didn't really say so much, he was very quiet. <laughs> now he's getting more and more into it, so that's great. But yeah, all in all, that's, that's basically us, our team. And then of course, who is Rubybox as well? It's our Ruby's community. Yeah? Um, and they are very engaged. So they talk, they feedback to us. There's a lot of social media happening here. Just a screenshot of, of an app that you probably know, the Top Fans app, you know. So you really see a lot of what's happening and, and engaged customers. And I think that is, for us, that's what, what actually makes us special and what is our point of difference, is that we don't just sell to them, but that we really engage them. And that's where, um, where the reviews are key written reviews, engaging them to write reviews, video reviews, posting content. So I think there's a lot more that we can actually still tap into with our community. And then of course, who is Rubybox as well? Our brand partners, that's just a short, some, some brands here listed. We're working with over 50 brands in beauty alone. And then there are other than non-beauty brands as we call them. So other, other brand partners that we actually engaged and that we do great initiatives with. That's about Rubybox. Okay, so how, yeah, so Chris asked me to tell you a little bit how, how did we come about, so how did the journey go? So as shortly mentioned, we spotted a concept overseas, birchbox.com, which uh, took off really nicely now. It's a big inspiration for us. It's actually quite a similar setup because um, I'm, a, like, I'm coming from a business background. Margot comes from an editor, beauty editor background at Glamour magazine, and they are set up very similar. It's actually also a beauty editor. It's two business people and one beauty editor. Eh? So. Quite funny that the setup even was similar. That wasn't planned to copy the setup, but it just happened. Yeah. So, um, so they are great. Um, then um, we knew, we actually saw there was Birchbox clones popping up all over the world, yeah, left, right, and center. So we knew speed is of the essence. 
So we worked really, really quickly. It, I think it took us three months to actually launch, yeah, to get it off the ground. Um, and it was really vital. I mean, I know there's always these discussions, you know, speed versus perfection. I'm very much for speed. Um, <laughs> I'm very much for perfection. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so um, in this case, <laughs> it's very good to be quick because um, actually, I think two weeks after us, the next, the next competitor launched in the market. And it was very valuable because we got the initial PR, we got the initial, um, what do you call them, like first, first movers. Yeah? We got the first movers in, in, in as consumers. Yeah? Um, so I think speed here was, was really vital and it was good that we launched it. There was actually so one other competitor two weeks after us, and then there was six months after that another international competitor launching. They're out now. <laughs> so one we bought out and the other one had to close. Yeah? So luckily we survived and are now the only ones around right now. There's obviously competition in the market. Every market always has competition. But for us at the moment, it's more content competition that we see, so online magazines, as well as e-commerce companies. But no one that does the 360 degree as, as we do right now. So um, yeah, so we launched as quickly as possible. We had we had help from early bird consumers because ultimately we we um, started the concept ourselves. So there wasn't really big money yeah, to to get going. So this is now a subscription model. So your consumers actually pay upfront. That helps you to get going. I'm not saying you know you can use the money and do things. You obviously have to deliver the products thereafter, but. <laughs> If you don't have if you don't have the funding, I mean, this, this, these subscription models really help you to get off the ground. Yeah? So thanks to our early bird consumers. Um, of course, there's convincing of the uh, that was then great. And Margot, basically, due to her relationships, the relationships key again because you know, like we didn't have a lot of money to buy and coming in. We are this international massive company. Here you go. Yeah? So it was really about relationships and um, and uh, Margot engaged her beauty brand contacts basically who believed in her because they knew her. Yeah? So we received samples from them, despite not really being there yet and present and not at all big, of course. Yeah? So the relationships were key in, in this regard. So brands trusted in us. We had really, really cool boxes um, to launch with. And then, of course, um, we grew pretty quickly, actually. And getting great people on board is key. So. So that was also amazing. We actually still have like a lot of them are actually from the very early start uh, are still with us and they were key to build it. And they were so engaged. Like, I mean, they did everything because we also did everything. I mean, we packed boxes and, you know, I mean, in the beginning, everyone does everything. And, and that was just very, very great to see. Partnering for us was key because, again, we didn't have the big marketing budget. So um, getting key, brand, key brands that market you, yeah, um, ob obviously getting something out of it as well, but believing in you and your concept and marketing you was was super cool. I mean, you'll see we did a really cool uh, uh, partnership with Vogue where they said, we actually really like your product. We want to do an in-store promotion with you. So, I mean, there, was, there were a lot of brands that really found it a cool concept and helped us getting off the ground with uh, a limited marketing budget that we had. Um, so that now all very nice, but then <laughs> we um, we had grown to quite a uh, quite a substantial size, and the subscription is great, but it's sort of um, it is relatively small margin, eh? And it scratches a bit the ceiling. Yeah, like how many samples can you can you possibly get yeah, in a market? How many samples are possibly available? So then we were like, okay, so do we continue running this you know nicely? Like we can pay salaries and that's all very good, or do we really want to go big? So we said, okay, we really want to go big, actually. So we decided to go the funding route and got Hustle Platinum Ventures on board. And then came the e-commerce. Because e-commerce costs money. It's an investment in stock. Uh, it's complexity, lots of different products. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of complexity in operations that comes with it and more stuff of course, also, that comes with it. So we went this route. So we, we, we would hope we are actually pretty serious by now. And um, just to show this is where we are now. Um, so this is, of, of course, all social media. Facebook is our most important channel. We just you know, broke it down in terms of numbers. Uh, YouTube, it was actually, um, I don't know if you've seen this, this YouTube video this, um, that we did. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this this high number here is obviously due to to the video you saw. Um, how, how did you get to the net before you before you turn on the net? The the come to me? That was no, really no no no, oh. no 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 Ruby Box. Oh Ruby Box. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
Okay, I don't need to explain that. The Ruby box, actually, we, um, in the very first start, starting days, yeah. um, we drew up a survey monkey pool and send it to all our friends and, and contacts and uh, brainstormed ourselves. Yeah? A lot of names, different names, like uh, mostly containing box. Yeah? We liked the idea of having the box in a name. Ruby uh, came from the thought we wanted actually, we didn't want to have beauty in the word because we weren't quite sure yet if we're going to extend to other categories. Yeah? So that was a vital element to, to think about. And then um, we wanted it to be aspirational and luxurious. So these are the two elements where we actually Ruby, the idea of the Ruby came in. Um, and of course, yeah, and then we, d we on purposefully didn't take a Ruby element because that would have then a bit gone too much into the whole jewelry route. But yeah, in general, the, the name was very, very well received and, and people really loved it. Huh? And, and in the Survey Monkey, it clearly came out as the winner as well. So yeah, um, the competitors were called Glam Box and uh, Glossy Box by the way, so all boxes basically out there. Mm -mm. Closed. They're internationally doing, in Europe they're doing well, but, but in South Africa they had to close, yeah. And Glambox we acquired, but uh, yeah. I mean it redirects, the website is still up, it, it just redirects, but it's, it's not operational anymore. Um, yeah, so fa I think Facebook for us is, is our major channel. We believe that Pinterest is gonna be interesting in the future to sell. Yeah? Um, Twitter for us is a bit more of an industry tool, actually. But um, Facebook definitely is super priority and, um, and we are al already working a lot with optimizing the channel as a, as a marketing and obviously sales channel also for us. Um, and yeah, Pinterest as said. Then here, just the, the unique page views, uh, unique, uh, yeah, unique visitors month. No, that's, that's wrong, sorry. That is page views monthly. Unique visitors got lost. It's about 10 to 12,000 unique visitors monthly. Um, so very engaged. Our newsletter database, monthly subscribers, what's mean, meant with monthly subscribers is that's from the start to date, uh, people that actually receive the boxes. Not all of them receive still currently the monthly Ruby boxes. It's still a lot of thousand boxes that we send every month. But that's because you have a, a certain drop off, you know. It's not exactly that, that high the number. So there are some cancellations and some expiries of gift subscriptions, etc. And then what's really, really great to see is that really every eight weeks, yeah, to just give it a bit of a perspective, 40% of the space shops online. So we actually really managed to, to engage them. And of course, beauty is also a really nice industry for, for repurchase. Like you buy a cream and it runs out, yeah? and then get a reminder to top up. So we have a lot of like transactional mails going on that actually really remind you to also review. So we push for content, but we of course also ask for, for repurchase if they want to and incentivize that. So yeah, that's to show that. Yeah, where to from here? So we, of course, we want to focus on, on I, I didn't mention that yet, a lot of rubies even, and a lot of consumers out there know us for the box. Because that's what we stand for in a way, and that's how we launched with. And we're still working on actually getting this try, discover by 360 degree concept better across to consumers. Huh? So there's also going to be a relaunch of the website. So that's already the, the new, new website, which should launch next week, actually. Um, which should communicate that better. We want to integrate it more. You can't see it here, but this is Box Shop Magazine. So really a three-way three, three -way navigation that focuses on the, yeah, on the box, on, on the e-commerce, and then also on, on the content, yeah? and having it more integrated. So we believe, especially in the, in the reviews that I mentioned, and, and think that will differentiate us from the normal e-commerce direction. And um, loyalty programs. We see that this is for us, it's, it's, it's really working. Like friend referrals, we incentivize those by our loyalty program, are a major sales channel for us. I mean, of course, a ma major channel to acquire a database, but this database converts because they trust their friends, of course. Yeah? What is the demographics of most of your um, subscribers? Younger audience? It's, um, actually, it's, it's mostly 25 to 40. Yeah, in terms of age, but we have seen it's quite nice. Actually, the under 25 age curve is slightly rising. Yeah, so it's still small, but we're tracking that obviously, and like we're seeing like a steady rise in the in the past months. But mostly it's 25 to, to 40, which like also makes sense in terms of shopping online with us. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we're also tracking it in terms of account creation and 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 just engagement. Yeah, and reading the content and. Um, mm -hmm. 
And there's also an initiative actually we are planning and we are super, super excited about that actually targets the younger markets and targets to cr increase the younger markets. Because that will probably also affect mm -hmm. the, the kind of products that you, that mm -hmm. you stock because the younger audience can't necessarily afford a few cents of yeah. products. Yeah. Yeah, so right now, I mean, our focus in terms of sales is we also with the money and our current customer base is. So it is the 25 to 40 group. Um, then in terms of uh, profile, it's a very usual e-commerce distribution pattern, the national one. It's the most, mostly in Gauteng, Pretoria, so Johannesburg, Pretoria, then Cape Town, then Durban, then everyone else. <laughs> but um, it's like 40, I think 47% right now in, jo in Johannesburg. So it is quite big. Up there, and um, and ethnicity wise, we are still very like very, but that also again, it's e-commerce, yeah. So you will see that with pretty much any e-commerce company, uh, very white dominated, colored on the rise, Indian very strong because very engaged in beauty, and and colored in uh, in black still very small, yeah, but also slightly on the rise. But yeah, so that's also we are working on that, but it's a, it's an e-commerce pattern. Um, that yeah, everyone would, would see that's actually working in South African e-commerce. So um, definitely getting the concept a bit more, uh, more across and integrating content more. Um, building and using our highly targeted database. We um, have a database of users that actually indicate down to the detail who they are. Because the box that I mentioned is a surprise box. So we say, please give us more information about yourself, like that we can target the products for you. So, um, I mean, it's incredible. We have like an incredible fill out rate of our beauty profile survey, which actually includes questions such as, um, what's your hair structure? Is it straight uh, or is it coarse? Is it, you know, and what's your skin type? What's your, do you, what's your skin concern? Is it, is it oiliness? Is it acne? So we, we know so much about them, not just their age as other companies do, but really a lot about beauty. That's what we do. So we, do you actually, we actually have. It's not just random. No. Because. She's the beauty editor here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And it's a, it's quite a, as you can imagine, it's actually our business has a very big operations part, because um, now there are thousands of people, and they need to these boxes need to be separated and properly packed and properly dispatched. So, so there's a very very physical element to this company. Um, which is exciting though as well. So we have actually um, eight ladies um, that, that work with us since I think, well four of them work with us since nearly the very start, yeah, that come every month and pack. So we have it very, co very comprised in like five days, all the boxes get packed. Of course e-commerce gets sent like every day, you know, if there are orders and, but, but um, that requires sending it them out on the day. But um, the boxes get packed really comprised in a big operation sort of just, yeah in the warehouse. So that allows us to actually provide now incredible market research to brands. And there have been brands like Tanqueray, like Key 5 like of course also beauty brands that have made use of this data, um, that uh, want to get inside information into our database and not just 100% um, or 80% of all our rubies said, yeah? but really 80% of a blonde living in, <laughs> you know, living in, in Durban said, yeah? I don't know, just as an example, so we can really break it down to, to the detail, which is very exciting and uh, which we want to market more and which we want to make use of more as well and help. I mean, we know that, I mean, I know that from, from having worked in corporates, it's, it's incredibly available for, for companies. So, yeah, we think we're sitting on, on quite a nice information base there. And then partnerships, as already mentioned, it's for, it's for us, it's key and and we also do like it. I mean, it's, it's the way we operate. Yeah? We don't just want to buy marketing space. We really want to partner with, with brands we love, with people we love, and we can work with. You know? And Vogue 
work has been great to us and, and the brand manager is really lovely. And we've done a great initiative with them in a metric store. So I mean, you can see it was incredible. It's right in the beginning, nearly. Yeah, Incredible branding for Rubybox out there. And they believe so much in us that the product has longevity. They believed in a beauty brand. The international guys bought into it. So we made up a special Vogue uh, Rubybox for them. Um, and they got, I think, 200 or something Vogue Ruby boxes for their stores. And everyone that bought a Vogue sunglass received that as a present. But they also had lovely in-store promotion windows. So we had an incredible branding in their key stores. Mm -hmm. so question from a partnership point of view, how do you, like, how do you know, for instance, uh, let's say Vogue Lan, um, mm -hmm. do you just get 40 lipsticks every month? Uh, or is there money involved? Or is it basically just to be giving product in exchange for access to the market? Do you mean if Revlon wanted to sample with us? Say for Okay, well, we, then we require a bit of a higher quantity than 40. <laughs> but, but yeah, okay, so, um, so for brands, we usually like to work on a package deal with them. So we ideally prefer that they don't just sample with us, but that they also follow a sort of a circle. Yeah? So they sample with us, but additionally, they, they'd like to have market research. Additionally, they want us to market their products on social media or, or having a, a special banner on our website. So really that it ties all together. We prefer that. Not all brands do it. Yeah, but we would like to get them into the thinking because they also get more out of it than I mean just sample. And even I mean we offer also like we did that because I mean some brands don't retail with us online. Unfortunately, there are certain limitations, especially fragrance brands are quite sticky. You know they're like tied into Edgars or you know the like, and they still sample with us. But then we actually allow them to drive back to another store. And Clix has exclusive brands, and Clix is actually a great partner for us. They're amazing. We work a lot with them. And um, they have exclusive Clix brands. So they, they don't want uh, for us to retail them online, but we actually drive back to the Clix store. In our preferred scenario, we would also retail them online, but we make it work, you know. I mean, if, if everyone gets something out of it, and for us it's very valuable to have great samples to provide to our rubies, yeah. Um, and Clix is also a great customer of ours because they book a lot of online space and market research and that. So uh, we, we, we make it case by case work actually for the brands. But since you're staying with the brands in the box, do you like, yeah? prefer to stay, stick with bigger brands that can offer like more products? Or mm. if there was a new brand on the market that was quite exciting, would you like to get behind new brands? And uh, super, yeah, we're super into okay, new yeah, brands. As long as they yeah. give you 12,000. No, no, we actually accept a minimum of 500 because we target you know, up to 15 different boxes, you know, because we target them. So, yeah, so we, we actually we get brands that are like, here, I have 500 products for you, and can you please make sure they go to... <laughs> yeah, we love, I mean, we love, we love them. <laughs> yeah, Margot is strict on that. <laughs> we'll try it and, you know, like, approve it. But yeah, I mean, Kiehl's was, for example, that's of course now in a bigger corporate, but Kiehl's was new to the market here. And they used it actually in a very cool way. We did a, I mean, they wanted it to look whole eco and that. And they did an exclusive Kiehl's box. And we let Rubies opt in for it. So then we give them the choice, you know, because usually Rubies expect uh, four to five different products, different brands. Yeah? So we don't want to just give them that and they might hate Kiehl's. Yeah? That's not great. So we said, okay, that's a Kiehl's surprise Ruby box, also new brand, told them what the brand is about. You can opt in for it. And we had thousands of those to, to give away. Obviously, first come, first serve for opting in. So um, it's great for new brands, for new products to, to use as a channel. Yeah? Um, and we love, yeah. Well, uh, that's the packages I mentioned before. You know, we love to book pa packages that include a marketing fee, depending on which package you book. You know, but that's, we don't put it down to a per sample fee because we feel it's a bit of a give and take. You know, we love having the beauty brands on board and the right products. And to be quite honest with you, it's not so easy because like there's a big quantity. So the brands help us, we help them. You know, but I mean, we we love to book 
book uh, 360 degree packages rather so that the brand says okay I'd also like to book market research and then depending on the detail can range from you know 10 to 20 thousand rand something like that you know it's not even I mean we're not charging crazy rates yet <laughs> so there is a, a nice opportunity to to tap into a lot into a lot of online marketing space so um, yeah and then we, we obviously have our deadlines for the monthly boxes we also like to work with the marketing calendar of the brands and know in advance what the yearly calendar looks like and then book the slots because actually it's booking of the slots yeah, because we know what our database looks like and a lot of the brands like like to target sort of the similar people not all of them but a lot of them have similar ideas and then we need to make sure that the slot is still available for their needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very important that as a consumer, when you receive the box, you don't receive two iframes or mm -hmm. two day frames because yeah. then ultimately how you're going to know what's working. Yeah. So that's the importance yeah. of standing up front and knowing the market. <coughs> and if, say, a red line is putting a huge budget behind Blockbuster launch in May, we know that perfect skincare will be red line's focus in May. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, we actually sell, you know, we do sell the man box. We call it man box. We also did a market research on the name and we had all the names. You test like really funky names and what one man box. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> but um, we do have some male rubies, but we actually do target it because, I mean, we're still relatively, you know, we don't have. We're not a massive company yet, so we have decided to focus on our core target group. And so actually we, we targeted to, to females in our core target group that buys it for their husbands, partners, brothers. Yeah. So we do it around special events like Father's Day. We also had quite a fun Movember initiative. I don't know what the tagline was, but basically to make your men like <laughs> look reasonably good despite Movember. <laughs> and <laughs> so yeah, so we always do it around events. So yeah, I already mentioned exclusive boxes and sampling. Kiehl's was a good example. We also did a Tanqueray box, actually, which was quite strange. We got this, the, 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 this company wanted to do it. I mean, Tanqueray wanted to do this, and we're like, Oof, alcohol, like, is that going to work? And our rubies loved it. I mean, again, we let them opt in for it. Yeah, it's a, I don't know, like, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, so we, we did a green packaging because they had this whole green vibe going on. And we had a beauty in there as well, but also a Tancred gin and a cocktail menu, which is really cool. Yeah. And then, of course, our usual like nail polish and uh, you know beautiful like blocking powder from Black Opal. Oh, and they produced a, a, a branded mini mirror to tie it all together. It was actually, the tagline was, get start the night right. Yeah? Start the night right. Yeah? And a private label branded our makeup brush. So we also start to producing actually our own. Whole different topic. <laughs> but yeah. So it, it works. And we, we, of course, we again didn't impose it on our rubies, but we let them opt in. And there was a huge demand for that. So we were surprised. So we were like, okay, cool. There's great opportunity to do other than the beauty or like conceptual campaigns. Um, we also did something with Fair, uh, Fair Lady and Sari where we actually coupled something that comes quite naturally with each other, like beauty and, and magazine, you know? So you read a lot about beauty, you get the magazine, and uh, our rubies could opt in for the box plus the magazine monthly. And uh, Media24 subsidized a part of it, we subsidized a part of it, and it's a great consumer offer. Huh? So just as an, another example of a, of a of a cooperation and partnership. Of course, uh, so what we offer, we offer, of course, the sampling part, uh, either non-exclusive or exclusive. Um, market research, we learn you in. So we actually, we, um, our rubies fill them out so much because we also have a strong loyalty program. So um, for other research, for example, now we're doing something with a fashion company and they were like, well, do you know, because they want to give us um, coats to give away, but now we have to know the clothing size, which we don't yet know. Yeah? So we just added, we don't put it to the beauty profile, but we just added as an additional survey to fill out. 
so we get that into, it filters in into our database. So we can extend that, because right now what we know about them is very beauty focused, but it can be of course different. So yeah, and, and then uh, online marketing. I mean, here you see clicks I already mentioned. They are really, their the online presence isn't so strong. They're not focusing on it. So they actually want to use us as a vehicle for, for their online presence. So um, this is a, a, a digitorial that, uh, that we wrote from our content team, um, just in, in terms of social media, a post showing nice engagement. Key five, uh, a relatively new launch for a light alcohol brand. Uh, within Distel, isn't it Distel? Yeah, within this, the Distel group, um, targeted to females and they want to come across as very like fashionable, um, but still fr friends and they're actually targeting, targeting the 30 to 35. Yeah? So very much in line with, with who we have in our database. And then the, the fashion that I mentioned, Urban, um, we are doing a, a giveaway with them. L 10 lucky rubies are gonna find in their ruby boxes. Not in their ruby, that wouldn't fit, but in the, in the, in the, they must be XXXX small then, <laughs> otherwise. No, they will find in their flyer a, a beautiful trench coat from Urban. Uh, so there's lots of things we can do, I think. It's the sky's the limit, I guess. And that's an initiative we're working on, actually, that I wanted to, to, to talk to you about and um, also would love to, he to hear your thoughts if you think it's cool and you know, if there's a potential maybe with one of your brands to work together with. We are actually looking, and that's interesting because you asked for the younger market, yeah, 25 and under, and this is an initiative w that we wanna use. This is not a sales initiative. This is really to engage the younger market. Yeah? Ruby Royals is how we branded it. And uh, so it's, I mean, it's probably quite self-explanatory. We wanna like find we want to find brand ambassadors yeah, that actually create content for us. And the focus here is on YouTube. Yeah. And this is a screenshot from Birchbox. This is one of the um, external, yeah? I mean, she's working now quite closely already with Birchbox, but she has started as an external normal beauty person. Yeah, like a, I mean, a normal girl actually that loves beauty. Yeah? Um, this girl, Miss Glamorazzi, she calls herself. This is one video, I mean, it has 166,000 views. Crazy. So, so um, her reviews of the boxes are watched by everyone, and and she's not even sitting at her office. I mean, I suppose she's not paying for the subscription anymore, I guess. But like, yeah, so she's doing really well, and there's lots of them out there. And YouTube is still relatively small here, but we think there's a huge potential to actually identify ambassadors and, and style icons and girls that want to get in more into beauty and of course we would also sponsor them with beauty products to try um, and you know give them insight and let them try social media and use it and use it for a company that actually wants to become and I mean is already quite good but wants to become really a leader in, in social media in South Africa in social media engagement so this is what this initiative is about it's really we want to go out there and we want to find the, the beauty ambassadors of the future, the, the, cool, the cool kids or the, the cool young females that know what's hip and that love beauty and that can engage an audience. And yeah, and basically what, what, what we, we want to launch this, we're looking for, for a lead sponsor yeah, to help us to obviously be in all the materials and be featured in all the offline and online materials, but come on board as actually a, a financial sponsor that is interested in creating a hype around the 25 and under target group in South Africa, and it wants to also tap into the beauty and fashionable world with that. So that's an initiative we are looking at and that we are very excited about and that we actually want to launch in May. Have yeah? L'Oreal Professional asked us that, and then we included a, a question in the beauty survey <laughs> to say, um, do, you, do, you color, uh, do you color your hair? Yes, no. If you color your hair, which, which one? And if you, what is your natural hair color? Yeah? So these questions, so we do know, and we can target hair color. That's what I'm trying to say with it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. So that is the, the, the Ruby Royals, our, our latest engagement initiative. And it's really, we want to start the competition phase um, with, with also creating a video to promote the contest and obviously like market it on all our platforms and all our online marketing channels, but also offline. So we also the the beautiful design you saw on the previous slide, also like posters all over uh, coffee shops, 
um, targeted places. Again, partnerships are key. So there's definitely going to be a couple of small sponsors that we can engage and that we already know no, there will be a lot that actually going to get involved. Um, the national event where we actually want to invite every. So how it works is actually that uh, people that who want to take part in the comp competition submit a video, a short video. Yeah, there will be a brief and it's obviously a short beauty video. So we see what their potential is as an ambassador. And then everyone who submitted their videos will be invited to a national event, which we would host in Joburg and in Cape Town. And then. Um, Again, providing a lot of offline and, and online exposure for it. And then crown five, ru five Ruby Royals. Yeah? And these five, five Ruby Royals will then go into, into the six months stage of actually really engaging their followers, building a followership, engaging the followership, engaging also, uh, also our audience, and uh, yeah, creating content. That's the idea of, of, of Ruby Royals. Yeah? And we're looking for a, for a key sponsor, <laughs> as you can see. And that's it from my side. <laughs> Thank you. What, what, what are your like, biggest challenges? Because as I was scanning your tweets, I saw a couple of people uh, moaning about not getting their boxes. Mm -hmm. Do you find that the South, Af the South African Postal Service is like one of the <laughs> like, hurdles? <laughs> We're actually working with courier service, except if people want to receive it via the post. But um, operations in general is quite a challenge, yeah. you know, like it is, I mean, it is very complex. Is it, it, operations is a, is a big challenge, yeah? So definitely like the whole systems operations integration is, is probably a big challenge. I mean, it's, it's a constant big challenge. Mm -hmm. Solvable, but yeah. And then, um, yeah, and, and customer, Customer satisfaction, I mean, consumer satisfaction, it's such a, it's a, it's a thing. We obviously strive for excellent customer satisfaction. Unfortunately, there are some Rubies that are not always happy, yeah, and then they tell us about it <laughs> openly. But um, <laughs> the advantage about it, to be really honest with you, is that our audience, I mean, if bad or, or, or good, obviously we hope for good, is at least incredibly engaged. So if something doesn't work, they will tell you, but also if something works, they will tell you. And that's great. I haven't seen such an engaged audience in, on any f brand I've been working on so far. So that's really something where I think we haven't even touched the, ce like the ceiling yet with what we can do with, in terms of engagement. But yeah, I would say operations is, is a challenge. And, and um, Hmm, the market is still small. E-commerce is, is, is very small, you know, getting customers actually, engaging them is cool and like content and social media, that's great, but getting them to actually buy. I mean, we've built quite a nice, with the subscription, it's a, quite a physical product and a little bit less barrier to entry. So we have built a very nice base. Um, but I also think that a lot of them were really early, early birds and, and, um, and now to get into the bigger market that's still very much lagging behind in e-commerce, it's going to be a bit of a challenge and it's going to be a time lag. Um, how's your team structured? Do you mm -hmm. have people who just produce content or do you have social media managers who mm -hmm. also produce content? Yeah, so I mean, our marketing team is very strong. So Anya is heading up the marketing team and there's a community manager who reports to her, who uh, manages Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, yeah, for all social media properties. And um, we, we try and, yeah, and content actually should be part of the marketing. Yeah? So it's very integrated. There's content we also produce, of course, for the brand pages and product descriptions and that. But there's content, we see it as a marketing, marketing tool. So that's the, that's the marketing department. And, um, and then, of course, operations, <laughs> which is really important to run well. And then there is um, yeah, the whole finance, finances, which, which I look after. We're not so many. I mean, we're only 11. Yeah? So we were quite well set up in, in marketing. We have a very good buyer who actually came from us to clicks, uh, from clicks to us. Yeah? She's, she's really good. Um, so there we are very strong. And then um, we're looking to actually in increase or build a sort of a, a, a account department, account management department, because what I've been talking to you quite a lot about now is um, what can we do for, for, for actual clients, for companies, yeah? and we haven't quite touched on that yet. Like, we do it with beauty brands a bit, but we, we really haven't gotten out there yet, and I think we should do that much more. So we're actually just, we're actually just interviewing for, for account management positions. So yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we just hired a really good uh, designer, yeah, senior <laughs> designer. So that's great. So you see that it's already like new design. So if you go to the, the current website, it's still in the old school version, but that's going to launch. Yeah. How do you compete with like companies? I know, for instance, Esme mm -hmm. Lauder launched mm -hmm. e-commerce. Yeah. Does that affect your business? Not really. Huh? Not really. Um, I don't, I don't, yeah, it's difficult. Huh? I don't quite believe in, except if you put massive power behind it. Um, I know they have a lot of brands under them, so they can actually nearly launch it like an online beauty store. But I don't quite believe in online stores that are single brands in a way. Yeah, I know they have more brands than just a single brand, but that are branded in a single brand way. I, I yeah, I, and I, I also think it's not their focus. That is actually the biggest thing I, I should say about that. If it's not your focus, I, I have only seen one brand doing on e-commerce really well here that also has uh, a physical presence, and that's Mr. Price. They do that incredibly well. Like, they link in all the advertising, I see they link offline and online in such a clever way. But it must be really tricky, like from a bricks and mortar where your focus is that, to actually extend to online, and then, I don't know how much the company also puts their focus on it, you know? I guess it's all about focus, yeah. So uh, it hasn't affected us at all, to answer your question. Not at all. Huh. Maybe a really mm -hmm. stupid question for someone like mm -hmm. but are there a lot of <laughs> um, uh, black beauty products in South Africa? Because like, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine they're mostly mm -hmm. big global companies. Mm -hmm. We work with, I mean, there's one brand, Black Opal, that I showed you, that is targeted to the black market. So we also did target this product. I mean, a brand asked us specifically. Uh, to make sure it's targeted, um, because it has higher pigmentation. I don't know, Marco can say all about this. Yeah, <laughs> realizing that there's this huge South African market that we mm. haven't tapped into. And all the big brands, like the Lauder companies, Clarence, have seen <coughs> out R&D people from their global, from Clarence, overseas, and they've been able to come and match and look at South African skin. Like, are they going to do that for us? 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 I mean, we can, look, we, we, of, we of course could target on, because we ask, you know, what's your, we don't ask it like that, what's your ethnicity, but we ask it in a sort of a picture way, in the beauty profile, and we also ask what's your like, skin color, like light, medium, but it's very tricky based on that to really get the foundation shade right. Yeah. But I mean, what mm -hmm. we could do is always ask people to opt in to receive foundation and have swatches with the mm -hmm. names and say yeah. which one would you like to try. That's a great idea. Shades, Who manages our database? Yeah. We, we, uh, do you mean yeah. if it's, yeah, 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 we do, it, we do everything ourselves. I mean, of course we have, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we do everything ourselves. But we have a lot of optimization for the developers, so Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we do use, we, we make use of, we're actually very much we, we love with, with systems that are, I mean, you know, international tools to use, like MailChimp, you know, it's great email software that is just open to use and relatively cheap, yeah? So we are trying not to, you know, reinvent the wheel and, and <laughs> build everything ourselves. We try and tap in things that are there 
and make them work for us. Uh. Mm -hmm. So it works, I would say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does everyone want uh, Sylvia's details? I'll, uh, I'll drop you on an email and uh, you want to become a, a brand ambassador. <laughs> yes. are free <laughs> unfortunately can I ask you guys just like what do you think about the, the, the Ruby Royals initiative in general like do you think it's something that could engage yeah. the audience yeah yeah, yeah. 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 cool yeah. awesome now we really have high hopes for that to be a talking point and you know new something new something revitalizing and also positioning our brand as really trendy and out there. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.